Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Evolved Man Masterclass. Today, I'm super excited to have with me James Boardman. Welcome, James. Hey, thank you for having me. Very privileged to be here. So, James, you stared into the dark abyss after leaving behind your beloved military career in the, moral, in the Royal Marines. Now you run a successful coaching business for men aged 35, and you've helped hundreds of people get back their lives on track, and you're also known as the dad coach. Um, tell us a little bit about how you got to uh, becoming the dad coach and what's the, uh, the origin story uh, of that? Okay, yeah, great. Um, so I left uh, the Royal Marines in 2011, and um, I came home to uh, civ civilian world after nine years service uh, in the military. Um, I very, very, very quickly came to realize that I um, was very out of place. Um, after having been so structured and disciplined for so long um, <clears throat> within, a, within a role that demanded discipline and structure, I suddenly came out and found it very hard to cope with normal life with civilian right. life again. And um, when I came out, I, I had a very quick transition. So I left the military on a Friday and started teaching at a college um, uh, on the Monday. So I literally very two days to sort my life out and, and kind of start this new regime. So you can imagine that my mindset going into teaching 16 to 19 year olds. Right. Um, I have had nine years military service as an acting sergeant and then suddenly came out as a teacher role to undisciplined 16 to 19 year olds who didn't appreciate the opportunity that they were in. And not only that, I was struggling with the lack of structure, I was struggling with um, coping with the pay drop. I took a massive pay cut to come out. So there were lots of stresses um, and you know, and it just, it just declined. It just declined massively uh, over a period, I, I would say, of two to three years. I was in a pretty dark place. Um, it cost me my marriage. Um, it, it cost me, I guess, the, the, the family that I came home to um, be with because I just was so selfish and so... Um, I, I can't really think. Yeah, I guess selfish is the word. I was, I was just very blinded by real life and what was going on because I was trying to deal with this transition from a military life into a civilian life. But yeah, I was still trying to then cope with the transition of only seeing my family at weekends and then suddenly seeing them all the time. Right. Suddenly, the it was like a tidal wave of overwhelm on top of me and I was being, I was drowning in stress, in frustration, lack of vision. I was just a big pile of mess, man. I was, I was in a bad place. I was in a really bad place. But at the time I didn't realize I was. Okay. Uh, I have to say at the time I was in my own little world. It's, it's only in the last two years that I really reflected on that time and realized in how deep as shit actually I was at the time. And so how did that, so let's, let's first go back to the, the military service. What type of, um, what was your role and how did it evolve in your, in your time in the service? Okay. So from a very early on, um, I passed my sniper aptitude to become a Royal Marine sniper, um, deployed to, um, a protection role in Afghanistan. Um, for four months, came back and then went on to join a sniper training team just as a, a, I guess as a helper to start with and that role progressed as I went on and did a, had a little more, little more aspect within it and, and started doing a bit more coaching and which is where I really developed my coaching role um, and really learned a lot from my peers and, and those that were above me, um, you know, from my sergeant at the time and my corporals, these guys were some of the best soldiers that the Royal Marines had to offer and right. I was really learning an awful lot from these guys and the lives coming on a course. But my real passion was always wanting to be a Royal Marine physical trainer. Now, okay. Royal Marine physical trainer was responsible for taking recruits from day one right through to week 32 of training and making sure that they hit each phase of that training. So it was something I wanted to do. And because of all the skills that I had learned and because of my own, I guess, me as a person developing, I managed to get through that course really well and passed the course and take four troops through training, uh, basic training. 
Um, I then sub-specialised in adventure training instructing where I went to be a rock climber, kayaking instructor, coaching for military personnel. So in theory, I would say I probably had the best job in the Royal Marines. <laughs> it was right. like, so when I'd left, I was, I was in a great position. You know, I, I, you know, I was due to do my, I was an acting sergeant. I was due to do my sergeant's course. I had the best job role. I got to go skiing. I got to go kayaking and climbing. <laughs> uh, uh, so I, I was at the pinnacle of my career, if you like. Right. But the, the pull on the heartstrings from uh, not seeing my children in, during the week was too much. Right. That makes sense. That makes sense. And that sounds like a pretty, pretty cool job. Um, I mean, basically, you know, taking these normal guys and turning them into the best of the best. Yeah, it, it was. And that is exactly what it is. And you, so many of them. So it, usually we start with a group of 60 and very much so by the end of it, the original of those 60 was probably only four or five left. And oh, that's wow. just, it is one of the most demanding training, um, military training schedules in the UK and, and probably probably the world probably so um out of curiosity what, what does it look like from 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 day one when these guys come in to end of week 32 in terms of what they're able to do okay so uh, on, in terms of physical fitness um for the first nine weeks it's very much getting them their cv cardio levels up their own mass, their own body strength up so they're doing a lot of own body weight stuff which is a massive shock to the system. So, so many guys come in all beefed up, all muscly, been down the gym, and they think that they're ready for this. But what they don't understand is the mindset because we, excuse my French, mind fuck these guys. We, <laughs> we've got to because they've got to be able to deal with this type of pressure mentally early on. Um, and then, so from here, we take them down the bottom field, and this is where we find out the men from the boys. You know, um, we, we do 30. 30 meter rope climb with 21 pounds of kit on and a 10 pound rifle. <laughs> We're doing the assault course, which has got from my memory about 15 obstacles. And they've got to do that in about four minutes. They've got to carry another man with 31 pounds of kit, 200 meters in like a minute and a half or something crazy like that. And then uh, and like pulling yourself back onto a rope over a, a water tank with all your kit on as well. So the demands physically and mentally suddenly go up another level. And then from here, the guys really go into very much tactical phase of training with their soldiering skills. But then we look at the commando tests. So the commando tests, it's been a while now. So I am, the first one is the endurance course. So they do a four mile run through this, um, uh, this common, if you like. And there are really, really tough obstacles to go through. Ones where you go underwater, you're under pressure, you're under stress. Uh, and then you've got a four mile run back to camp and you've got to do all this in time and you've got to be able to get your 10 shot. You've got to get eight shots out of 10 after being fatigued uh, and wiped out. So it's, a, it's mentally tough. Um, we then go on to um, Tarzan Assault Course, which is a, a very short, but probably the hardest one. Um, it's about takes around 30 minutes and it's this high assault course then going on to the bottom field the one that i talked about earlier and then right. climbing up a 30 foot wall completely fatigued with no safety on so they have to be switched on um and then finishing uh, sorry and then a nine mile speed march and then finishing with a 30 mile trek with about 50 60 pounds on your back um across dartmoor which is a uh, which is very much the wilderness in the middle of nowhere so it, it's demanding so you can see that they go very much from a civilian a boy to a, to a man at the end who is trained, strong, able to deal with situations. And obviously we're trying to get these ready guys to, to go to Afghan and war zones and be able to deal with 12 hour firefights, you know, and be able to adapt and overcome. And that's, that's our role. Yeah. No, that makes me, that makes me want to crawl back in bed right now. After <laughs> <this event. laughs> that's amazing. Um, so we take you from the Marines where you found your passion for, for training people. Uh, you transitioned into teaching where there, there, there wasn't any structure. Um, things, are, things are falling apart. How did you start to um, put back the pieces and, and evolve into this uh, trainer that you are today? And, and how did you focus on the, the dad aspect? Okay, so um, when, I, when I went into the college um, to teach, I, I, I probably did a year and a half, maybe, maybe a bit longer. And I just definitely knew it wasn't for me. I, I remember sitting there going, I can't be doing this in 60 years time. Now people are born to teach. Right. 
college and there's a lot of good teachers out there, but it just wasn't for me. Um, and I, at the, at the time, was doing a little bit of part-time fitness work. So I kind of had a, I, I would do stuff on a Saturday and a Wednesday night and I'd be like a five pound a class or so to speak with a little bit of personal training just to try and make up the money that I'd taken a hit on my, on my pay cut. Um, I then ended up leaving a college um, and setting up my own business. And when I set my own business up, I, I set up a company called Body Shop Fitness. And I had no idea how to run a business. Like right. I had no clue. I, I knew nothing. <laughs> Um, and I ended up following a guy online called Bedros Kulian, his name was, and I still follow him now, but he was my only inspiration to set up a business. Like I used to follow him and watch him. I couldn't afford him. He lived in America. He lives in California. And this was back in 2013. And I set this group training up and it was all moving so fast and it, it surprisingly just took off and right. Uh, you know, I just was doing my best and it was word of mouth and we're building up and building up and, you know, fast forward to now, we've got like 200 members. Um, we are we are going through a transition period now where we're massively growing. I've got staff working for me um, and setting up that company made me bring out the best version of me. Right. Um, working with really highly motivated individuals that wanted to get fit and wanted to train without them even realizing in it, they were really inspiring me to come out of my shell. And the more I came out of my shell and the more confidence I built, the more self-esteem I built, the uh, more I was able to sort of stand a little taller, as I would call more fire in the belly, be the best version of me. And I was doing stuff that I never thought I could ever do. So my self-belief was, was there, you know, and I learned as I went along, I've learned about businesses. I've, I've hired mentors. I've tried and tested and failed and won and gone through lots of emotional battles along the way. And, right. um, and how I come on to the dad's coach was that the business was established. We were doing well. Um, things were running smoothly and I wanted to do more and I wanted to help people um, that were me when I was in my dark hole. Um, right. you know, I kind of was around 36 mark at the minute and I kind of felt that I was talking to a lot of my clients who were in their forties and stuff. And you kind of getting to talk to them. And there was this genuine issue of anxiety, stressed, overwhelmed, drained man, I get of a man that I guess was just not in this group. There, there must be other guys that are like this out there. Right. I was like that. I was, um, you know, I, I was in, in the trenches. There was no way to get out. There was, there, there was no one really on the scene at that time who I could really reach out to or influence me or motivate me. So I tried and tested lots of different stuff um, online and I came up with the dad's coach. And the dad's coach is specifically for men who are 35, who are busy, stuck in a rut, who are just existing through life, who are not really reaching their potential and not living. And I think what's happened is that through the 20s, they've been bachelors, they've enjoyed life, partying girls, they suddenly find somebody to knuckle down around the, between the 28 and 32 year old mark, they have children. Suddenly, the job that they didn't really rely on, they have to be relied on now. So they're in this job that they're not necessarily interested in, they don't necessarily like. So the fire's flat. There's right. you know, suddenly because you've had children, mum, the, the wife can't work necessarily straight away because we need that support to bring up the children. So suddenly you become the main breadwinner. Suddenly then there are massive heaps of responsibility. And I find that as soon as the guy gets to 35, <clears throat> and I'll tell you why I chose that age in a second, right. um, coming up to 40s, the overwhelming pressure of men, <clears throat> excuse me, dealing with the stress and responsibility of looking after your family, making sure that the mortgage is paid. All of this here, all of a sudden guys are forgetting about themselves and they're forgetting about their health. They're forgetting about what they love. They're forgetting about their passions, their drive, their vision. The fire in the belly is gone. The best version of themselves has, has diminished. It's gone. And I noticed at 35 that I couldn't get away with eating what I used to and missing training. I suddenly looked down and was like, there's, there's, a, there's a pooch down there. There's a, I'm gonna have to work hard at this. And it really gave me the kick up the ass that I needed to get myself back into shape. 
But then I thought to myself, I'm not the only guy doing this. I am not the only guy in this scene. So the dad's coach has been running since June. Um, we, um, and it's growing massively, like we spoke about off, offline. You know, um, I decided to write a book this year um, called It's a State of Mind. Now, there is a lot, a lot, a lot of fitness instructors out there who can tell you how to get fit. They can tell you all the right information. They can tell you the right nutrition program. They can tell you they could be the best. Right. Unless you get your state of mind in the right place, it all means absolute jack. Because if you are not in the right frame of mind, you are not a deer. You, you'll do it for two weeks and quit. But you have to be in the right frame of mind. You have to break down the barriers. You have to lick, think about the long-term vision before starting something because you can't come along and do a two four week course and then forget it right you have to be in this for the long run and and i find that as soon as the surrounding areas around so if you're in the middle and you're trying to get fit but all of these distractions around you i.e the bills i.e work i.e relationships i.e um your personal development all these areas are falling down which generally means that the first thing to take the hit is your fitness and health because you then the guys get at home they open up a bottle of beer then it's another bottle of beer then we feel tipsy then we feel better then we wake up with a hangover and we go again you know we get home we're stressed we take it out on the people that we love we're not spending enough time with the people that we love we're not cherishing that time we're not developing ourselves enough and we're not getting the work-life balance right. And, and these are the areas that I'm targeting through the Dad's Coach, through means of fitness programs, through means of my book, through means of seminars we're launching this year, my podcast and all of those things. And we're trying to reach out to, to two guys that are 35 that are fit that bracket. Nice, nice. Uh, there's a whole, whole lot of knowledge you just dropped right there. I want to highlight a, a few things. I mean, I think first, it's amazing how... You know, you can look at, at someone like you that that's been at the you know pinnacle of a, of a military career, and then um, you know has gone through a big transition, and and that you can go to that dark place that that anyone could, even with the training, even with that kind of self esteem and confidence that you had in, in one arena that doesn't necessarily translate to uh, another arena, and it kind of highlights uh, you know how how we need to be conscious of our own, um, not necessarily weaknesses, but, but the fact that uh, a transition can be a, a huge impact on, on the way that we operate and that we need to be cognizant of that and we need to constantly be fueling our, our development in that way. So I think it's, you know, it's, it's, um, I'm glad like you, you mentioned that and highlighted the, the dark period because I think a lot of people can identify with that and a lot of people go through that with a long period of time and, and those are the types of people that, you know, you and I are, are trying to reach right now. Of course, yeah, yeah, 100%. And then I think, you know, it also, you know, highlighting that, that long-term vision and the importance of, of really feeling that and, um, you know, uh, having that inspire you. Cause I think you can be like, yeah, I want to have a six pack. Yeah. I want to play with the kids, but I think there needs to be like an active internalization of that. And, um, you know, almost, uh, so a lot of those self-development guys say, you know, you need to smell it, you need to feel it, you need to be inspired by it. So like when you are getting out of bed, when you are weak, like that vision needs to inspire you and it can't just be something that's like, nah, I don't really need six packs. I'd, I'd rather yeah. just, you know, yeah. hang out with the beer and my kids. So I think. So something that we, that something that I try to really touch on with guys that I work with on, a, on, on our fitness programs is trying to find the emotional connection. And when you find the emotional connection, you suddenly, you suddenly, be, suddenly become a little bit more motivated when you don't want to be. So let me give you an example. A lot of the guys that I talk to, I like to peel back the layers and ask them, why is it that they are phoning me and contacting me? And a lot of them go, well, I want to lose weight. Or, you know, I want to, and I go, why do you want to do that? Why do you want to do that? And I kind of have the seven whys. I think it's quite a common coaching practice. Right you kind of get down to the very core of why they want to do it. And a lot of them want to watch their kids grow up and be here. And for a lot of guys that are 35 plus, it's, for, for me, it's not about that six pack. It's about, yes, have, having a body that you're comfortable in. It's about having being fit and, and well mentally and internally within our sort of bodies, you know, the soul and, and that type of stuff. 
and it's giving your body the best chance to survive older age to watch the grandkids go up to see all of those things and the roi the return of investment is exactly that is watching those kids grow up and being around because how people are living their lives between 35 and 50 dictates how they're going to live their lives between 50 and 70 60 and 80 and they've if they, people are not paying attention to, to themselves between 35 and 50, man, 50 to 70 is going to be a real struggle for you. Right. 60 to 80 is going to be an even bigger struggle to you. You know, we are living longer, but we have to be doing something to live in longer. We can't suddenly go, yeah, well, I'm going to live to 80 because the average lifespan is getting further. You think about all processed foods that are going down range. You're thinking about all of the illnesses that are coming in through product for high sugar, it's all there. And unless we control it now for guys, those later years are going to be, a, uh, going to be really difficult. And those are the years that you should be reflecting on life, being with your children, being with your grandchildren, still being able to go on a holiday, make Christmases, be flexible, be mobile. Uh, and it's really having that long-term vision of that goal and saying when you don't feel like it remember that remember that what your that emotional connection and why you're doing it and I, it it really is quite a powerful tool for those guys right i think that's it dovetails nicely into the theme of of the evolved man because if i kind of extract what you're saying uh, a big part of being evolved man is being able to have that long-term vision and you know sacrificing that short-term pleasure for what's really important and, and understanding that and then being able to take action on that. Um, 100%. 100%. So speaking of taking that action, what, um, what do your programs look like when you take someone that's, that's going from, from couch potato to, uh, you know, what you hope to be a, a sustainable exercise and, and nutrition practice? Of course. Yep. So we, um, so we run a TDC six week program. So it's the dad's coach six week program. And, it's own body weight workouts because I feel that um, if somebody hasn't done anything for a while, the last thing that we need to be doing is throwing around kettlebells and weights right? because they need to learn functional movements before that we do that. And we need to be able to learn how to squat properly before we squat with a kettlebell or squat with a slam ball. So the program works very much on working on own body weight workouts uh, over a six week period. For the first two weeks it's pretty much prep fit. We work Monday to Friday and what we try to do is incorporate a golden hour. This is something we talk about in my book. And it's the golden hour of sacrificing an hour's sleep and getting up an hour earlier if it's sustainable. So what I mean is don't get up at three o'clock in the morning to do this. Right. If you are able to get up at five o'clock in the morning, half four in the morning, and fit your workout <coughs> excuse me, in in the morning and get it done, then it's going to set you up for the day. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to build the foundation for a more positive outlook to your day. It allows you to do your workout, get your food prepped, shower change, have a good breakfast, walk out the door clear and focused, rather than waking up at half past six and leaving the door at quarter to seven and losing as soon as you walk through that door because you've got no money for your snacks, you've got no money for your food, and the money that you do have, you end up in McDonald's or or a fast food place because you're just stressed and overwhelmed and it's about getting it right early in the morning um nutrition wise so we run a um 1800 calorie um food program it's just a good balanced diet it's a good balanced diet to, to sustain energy levels for training to sustain um good eating habits basically putting the right products in you um, and then we have a massive support basis through our Facebook page. So I turn up every single day, Monday to Friday, making sure that people are motivated, accountable. And how we see this Facebook page is very much a journal. So I ask the guys to put in content on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That's their mm -hmm. commitment. Tell me how they're doing. I can then see what's happening. Put up pictures of you working out. Make it fun. Interact. And it kind of inspires to bring the whole group up together going, but it's like, 20 guys in here from all over the UK and then we're all doing the same thing and we're on the same path. Right. Guys that tend, then, then tend to finish the six week program can go on to our academy. So in our academy, we, um, I basically write a program and do some coaching videos every single month. So they get a four week program every single month to continue the long term vision. There's accountability and, and there's more nutrition coming through. So really the kickstart is the six weeks. The academy is the maintenance.
Nice. And what, what kind of defines the difference between the, the guys who are successful with it versus not? Um, I think the key word is commitment. Um, so guys that are successful um, are people that are willing to put themselves on the line and really go for it. The ones that are not, and, and what's funny about it is that even I'm the one who's reaching out to them because they are not seeing anything from them. Yeah, right. I never hear anything back. So it's that. So I give. I, it's like I give more of a, more of a shit about them than they do about themselves. And one of the things I make really clear on the phone before I sign anyone up to this program is that if you need me, reach out and ask me. But what never happens is that those guys never do, and I feel that there is this ego side of a guy that will not reach out, that's too afraid to ask for help because then ne maybe they haven't experienced that. Maybe they haven't experienced somebody saying, I'm here for you to reach out to. So reach out, you know, and what happens is they go, they go, I just, it just didn't work. Uh, or they're just stressed. And all those distractions that I was talking about, the work overload, the relationship aspects, the personal development, all of it is overwhelming you. And the first thing that takes the hit is the fitness. So those guys um, that don't reach out are the guys that just slip away and they'll end up going through the whole process again and then they look at something else in another couple of years and try and do it that. Right. And, do yeah. that. And, I, and I always think to myself, if not now, when? And, and that's almost my, my, my saying. When someone says to me, I can't commit to it because I'm doing this or that or this, and I'm like, well, if not now, and this perfect opportunity right now to turn things around, when are you going to do it? Because procrastination then creeps in, then laziness creeps in, and then it never gets done. Yep. Yeah, I think uh, it's, it's easy for people who hide to continue hiding. And I think, you know, especially for men, it, it, it is a challenge to ask for help. But, you know, I think as, as you said earlier, you know, you, you found mentors and uh, it is so key to finding those mentors to help you know, one level up. And, you know, I know that's the case for me. And, and I think that's an important message is that when people are feeling alone, scared, hopeless, that, you know, reaching out for help is the, is the best way to, to get out of it and, and being able to share those feelings of maybe feeling uh, inadequate or, you know, like you're not um, keeping up with the Joneses or, or, you know, that you don't have it in you that, that you do it just, uh, you need some help. 100%. Yeah, exactly right. And, I, I just think people are not used to it. People just don't know how to, people, I think men don't know how to ask for help. Right. They think it's a sign of weakness. hundred percent. And that's, and that is ego. Like he's like, drop the ego, allow yourself to just open up. If you're in a shit place, cry, get it out of your system, <laughs> just let go. And, and, and it works. Like oh, fuck, I've had guys in tears on the phone to me before because I've just peeled back the layers asking the right questions. And then it just, it, but, but you let yourself down, you let yourself go you, and you just, you just let it, let that ego drop and you then move forwards. Right. All right. Um, what, what practices do you recommend that the audience can try out to, to level up? And I think that that might also uh, uh, dovetail nicely with uh, with the free gift that you have to offer. Okay, great. So, um, I think the first thing that people have to do is um, understand that if you're going to make a change, that you're going to have to make a change for life. Um, quick fixes, fads. There is no point in just doing two, three, four weeks and then stopping. You like if you're going to commit to something, then back yourself up every single time and commit. Okay, don't hold back and go all in. And it's literally understanding that it is a case of progression and not perfection. Like no one starts a business that is perfect. No one, you know, I, I don't know. Do you guys know the body coach over here, over there? Uh, Joe Wicks. Not, not too familiar. Yeah. So he's a, he's a really, really big guy. So when he started his business, okay, he was not three, he didn't have three million followers. He didn't have like all his program all set up. He just started by doing videos and he created a business over seven years to be three million followers. When you start your fitness, you are not going to have a six pack overnight. You are not going to be in the shape of your life overnight. You are going to go through pain. You are going to go through distress. It's going to be uncomfortable. 
you are going to be challenged mentally and physically because your body is not used to exercising, so you're going to have sore bodies. Your mind is not going to be used to pushing it out of its comfort zone. Nutritional-wise, you are not used to eating good foods and preparing food for yourself. So understand that this is a journey. Understand that these, there are stepping stones to take. But as long as your graph is going up and you're heading in the direction you want to, then you will win. The minute that you don't understand that long-term vision and the minute that you don't back yourself up, you are going to go all the way back down and all of this hard work will mean absolute nothing will mean nothing. So on that, I've done a, for, uh, a four week program. So this four week program is something that, um, so basically we used to run it as a 21 day uh, program and we used to sell it for, I guess in the States, it's usually about $99. But I decided to give away as a free gift as a bonus, I've put um, five extra follow along workouts on there, but basically what I did on my, um, my Facebook feed, which I believe we're going to put the link up on this podcast later on. Right. So you can click onto there. That all so will have direct access to my free Facebook group um, where I put in just content Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, kind of just check in, kind of see what people are up to um, because the majority of my time and effort is with um, – usually within my academy and my group. So I like to just kind of touch base with my guys in this group. It's a free group um, and it's designed to really help guys motivate themselves and kind of see what other guys are up to, so to speak. So, but the workouts are own body weight. All the sets are done for you. Um, there's a warm up and cool down in there as well. It'd be great to see if you see those guys who have signed up to it and take part in it and, and do it. Don't, don't just look at it, do something with it. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it, there's a great tool right in front of you, um, to use. Yeah. All right. Well, appreciate you, uh, giving that out to the audience and I no really hope people take it, take advantage of that. So as we talk about the, the evolved man, what does, uh, what does evolution look like for you and, and your next steps? Man. So we have a busy year ahead. So, um, we are going to be introducing some seminars. So the Dad's Coach Seminars, I'm looking to run four within the UK this year. So it's going to be our first ones. And I want to do it in the form of not just the normal type of seminar where guys come in, they sit down and they listen to someone talking on stage. I want it to be more practical. So we are going to be going to do some early morning fitness, having breakfast together. We're then going to go on the hill, do some training on the hill together. But while we're on that hill and while we're doing fitness and while we're on our breaks, that's where I want to talk to the guys about some of the key points that we've talked to, to today, and giving them guidance and support and structure to move forward. Um, and I want to do that within seminar sort of format. You could call it a seminar slash training days. Um, so that's something that I really want to build up. So, so much so that in 2019, we're almost doing eight in the year and even maybe thinking about maybe bringing one over to the States because later on in a year, we're going to be launching a dad's coach in the States awesome. um, and, and not just the UK. So um, I'm looking to possibly write another book. Um, this time I'm not going to put myself under so much pressure. I'm going to look to maybe just write a chapter a month and kind of like spend some time writing, put it all together, somehow get a format going for the, for another book. Um, our podcast is just, it's, it's, it's a state of mind um, is on iTunes. You can obviously check some of those out already. There's like 20 or 30 podcasts up already. We're going to be relaunching that. Um, we also will be uh, expanding our That's Coach program into the States, uh, like I mentioned, probably around June. So look out for us there. Um, we'll be coming in with our message and, and kind of really trying to promote men's fitness over there and men's health and well-being. Um, and just keep doing our job. Just keep putting our message out. Um, I think when you do something that's like this, it takes a while for guys to really understand it and take it in. Right. Um, so we just got to keep putting that message out there. Keep putting our, keep putting out the positive vibe. Keep getting the best out of our guys, you know, and, and just keep doing what we're doing. Um, awesome. And I, I think it's going to be a good year. All right. Well, um, love, love the, the work that you do, the, the authenticity that you bring to it and, uh, you know, the way you're, you're changing lives. I think it's, uh, it's Thanks, really valuable and, 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 and the way that, you know, you can also use fitness as a way to, uh, open guys up to, um, understanding what what's inside and getting that fire back i think it's it's really important work and and you've got you know a unique way to unlock that so uh 
Appreciate it. it. Thank you. Keep on, keep on. And thanks for having me. It's been, it's been good to talk about it. It's good to share the message. Thank you.